just a slight exaggeration to make a point. But it can often get almost hot enough to fry an egg or two out on the job site. And it can get hot enough to fry the brain, to disable with heat exhaustion, or to even cause collapse and possible death from heat stroke. Heat stress is one of the most serious of industrial health and safety problems, and it doesn't always occur out under the hot sun. Heat stress is a problem wherever there's a potential for heat buildup. Anywhere there's a lot of heavy machinery, an open furnace, or poor air circulation, and high humidity. Anyone working in a hot environment is susceptible to heat stress, but poor physical condition or poor acclimatization to hot working conditions can play a big factor. To deal with heat stress, the body reacts in two ways. Increased heart rate and stronger blood circulation that elevates skin temperature. And sweat. Good old-fashioned sweat of the brow. But when strenuous, prolonged physical effort is involved, the body may not always be able to handle the problem. The first failure is likely to be simple heat exhaustion, developing as a result of loss of body fluids and salt through sweat. The symptoms are excessive fatigue, weakness, nausea and headache, sometimes dizziness or disorientation. The victim will probably have normal skin temperature and may still be sweating with a damp and clammy skin. There just won't be any strength to continue. Treatment for simple heat exhaustion is usually just as simple. The victim should be helped into a cool spot. If it's out on a construction job site, try the back seat of an air-conditioned vehicle. Or, if that's not handy, then find the shadiest spot with air circulation. And encourage the victim to drink electrolyte fluids, if possible, something like Gatorade. But don't start shoving in salt tablets. Building up the body salts comes later. Plain drinking water will do if that's what's available. Usually, with rest and fluid replacement, the victim of heat exhaustion recovers within a few hours. But if vomiting occurs, or if the victim passes out, take no chances. Get medical help, and quick. Heat exhaustion and heat stroke are two different things. Sure, they're both caused by the same problem, but heat stroke is deadly serious. When the body's mechanisms for regulating internal temperature, increased blood flow, and sweat are no longer able to do the job, that means serious trouble. The sweat glands shut down, simply stop working. A hard worker may experience the first symptoms and not recognize the problem. Mental confusion can then set in, even delirium, and can further prevent the victim from even being aware of the onset of heat stroke. Then comes collapse, loss of consciousness, and even convulsions. The victim's skin will be dry. Skin color, especially the face, will be red or mottled and the skin temperature will be hot, over 100 degrees. The touch of a hand will recognize the fever, and there won't be a second to waste. The heat stroke victim will die unless medical treatment is quickly administered. But don't just wait for help. Immediate first aid may be the difference between life and death, a quick recovery or prolonged illness, even permanent disability. But don't just wait for help. Immediate first aid may be the difference between life and death, a quick recovery or prolonged illness, even permanent disability. I need an ambulance in a hurry. While that medical help is on the way, stroke. move the victim immediately to a cool area and quickly soak the victim's clothing in water, cool water and lots of it. It's imperative to get the temperature down and fast. And use whatever is handy to fan the victim vigorously. Get the surrounding air circulating as fast as you can to further increase the evaporation and cooling process. But nothing is more important than getting medical attention and fast. If you wait even a few minutes to see if old Joe's gonna snap out of it, then you've waited too long. Without the prompt first aid, 20% of heat stroke victims will die. If the body temperature reaches 108 degrees, irreversible brain damage is a certainty. Your first aid, a cool place, lots of cool water, 
not in the victim, but on the victim, and circulating the air may well be all the difference in the world. It's up to you to respond immediately, to take charge, act decisively, and to help save a life. This is Claude Akins reminding you that safety is your job too.